Coming up on today's Good Fishing, the Great Bear Lake region on the Arctic Circle in Canada has been exceedingly good to me. That is a lot of fish, my friend. My largest trophy lake trout, unbelievable colorful Arctic char, Arctic grayling, and monster pike. I mean, look at this thing. And last August, with my great friend, Dr. Jerry Faust, came an unbelievably successful muskox hunt expedition. I'm feeling absolute awe. Not only was I able to check the taking of a trophy off my bucket list, Jerry's muskox green scored number seven or eight in the this world in Boone and Crockett. Big boy. Well, anyway, oh, while boy. lake trout fishing on Great Bear on that same trip, I felt certain that we had caught a completely new subspecies of lake trout that had never before been documented. More on that story later, but up first, last May in Minnesota, the Winkleman family was busy setting out in different directions to enjoy a wonderful spring day. Well, this will be the first time I've ever taken the entirety of F Troop fishing at the same time. <laughs> okay, let's load them up, kids. For me, my two oldest daughters, grandsons Caden and Dylan, Spring crappie fishing was the name of the game. Okay, F Troop, are we ready? Meanwhile, Christine was on an outdoor adventure of her own. Okay, now, shh, don't tell anybody, but I'm going out for morel mushrooms today. Babe doesn't even know where I'm at today, so I'm gonna go and see if I can find some, because then we're gonna have them for dinner. Okay, kids, man your battle stations. One of the things that I did today was made sure that everybody had a really good St. Croix rod built for crappie fishing. Here's what you do. See, now I put this finger out here and I catch the line right here, like this, and I hold it with this finger, and then I open the bale, and then cast and leave go with that finger. We also were using Cabela's gold spinning reels. Boom, got one, Mom? Good outfits, balanced right, so the kids can fish with them just like you and I do. Our first crappie. Is it a big one? Jasmine, where was that? Make sure you know because you want to get back to it. There's probably more right there. You got it, Kate? There you yeah. go. All right. Teamwork. See, when you're going through the woods, you want to kind of go slow and just keep watching both sides of where, you know, the trail that you're walking off of. Aha! There is one right here. And you know what's really exciting about this? If you find one, you know there's going to be many others. Look at that. Now they say reach down and just pinch it and turn it at the same time because you want to kind of leave the root there as well. So hopefully it'll come back next year. One for the bag, many more to come. Oh, he's a fighter. Somebody grab the net. Somebody grab the net, Mom. Oh, this is a big one. Bring him in. Mom, I caught one. Nice, kid. Bluegill. No, that's a nice bluegill. I caught a bluegill. You did? Grandpa, Let do me you want to keep the bluegill too? Why not? Okay. Oh got boy. It? Beauty. Where's that, where's my guy with the net who's gonna net this for me? I will. You better hurry. Where's the net? Where's the net? I got him. Look at this one, Dylan. You want to open that up for me? Open up the live well for him. There you go. Holy, that's huge. Okay, that's the start, kids. And look at this. There's another one. Beautiful. And look at this. We didn't even have to move. Look at this one. It's hiding right underneath the leaf. Here's another one. Look at this. This is how much I'm moving. Look at this. I'm telling you, I mean, this is prime time. When the temperature reaches around 60 degrees during the day and 40 at night and doesn't get any colder, that's when all of these start sprouting up and you don't want to miss the time. Swing him over. You got him. Look, Dylan. Even mom can one. catch one. Yeah, I got one. Look, he's got a big mouth. Oh, he's a big one. Yeah, we can keep that one. Can you put them in there? Put your thumb in. There's in another mouth. one. Oh, Grandpa's getting one again. They're starting to bite. That's a good thing, Dylan. Oh my God, this is a crappie too. Do you need a net? 
Good job. Look at that one. Open the live well. Thanks for your help, sir. Dylan, you're getting a fish. Come on, honey. Nothing like a little chaos. All right, this one is on. Keep Do it. Ooh, that's a big one. You're going to have to hold the pole really tight. I'm going to get the net. Oh, oh, that's the biggest one of the day. You did it, Dylan. More family fun engaging in two highly prized American classic outdoor traditions, plus that exciting fly-in trip to the Canadian Arctic for rare lake trout, all when we come back. Get him. Kids and grandkids crappie oh. fishing from a boat okay, together on a sunny spring day. If that is an American classic angling, I don't know what is. Oh, this one's a big one. There you go. Mm -hmm. Put him in the live well and get yourself a mini. You know what that means, though? <laughs> We're going to have a feast of crappies. Oh, one jumped way back in the reeds. I'll bet you there's some big fish back in there. Oh, boy. That one, Grandpa? Oh, yeah. I got him. Big one? This is what we commonly referred to as a really nice eater. Man, this is awesome. I wonder how Chris is doing on her mushroom hunt. Now this is so much fun. This is like finding crappies or getting on a honey hole that's holding up a whole bunch of walleyes. When you find a batch, don't tell anybody. Keep it your own secret. This is like a kid in a candy store. Here's another one. And look at how beautiful. And the reason why I'm putting it in a mesh bag is so that when I'm walking down the trail or through the woods, the spores come out and hopefully we'll get more. And I don't know why I'm whispering, nobody else is out here, but it's like I, this is a treasure. I mean, being able to come out into the woods and pick morel mushrooms and have them for a meal, when you find them, you take advantage of it. I got them. That's a huge one, he need that net. Get the net, get the net, get the net. Oh, that's oh. a toad, Kate. Holy. This is a monster. There you go. That's a monster. A monster. Caden may have big fish of the day here, guys. We don't know, but it's possible. I think he's got most fish of the day so far, too. Here it's you go. eight. It's eight. That's eight? Okay. Yeah. Oh, Amy's got it. Oh, Amy's got a big one. Grab the net, somebody, for Amy. Oh, yeah, it is. Get it, Mom. <laughs> oh, Dad's got one. <laughs> there you go. Holy. I'll okay, just scoop. Dylan, look at here. I'll scoop mine because the net is occupied. Oh, oh, I got hold biggest. on, mommy's got to take the fish out. Wait take a up. second, that's, I, I that's three at a time here. Right, right there. Yep. Yeah. Ow. Now they're biting, huh? Right. Hey, Dylan, open that box. I probably for got the, fish. the biggest one today. Was All this right. as big as the one that you tried to catch? That's a big one. Oh, there's another one. You know, right in the beginning of spring, when the trees are starting to bud. The uh, lilacs are just budding out. There's not much foliage in, in the woods. It's prime time to come out and look for your morels. And you just sit on the ground and you can look around and just and you see them popped up all over the place. I mean, it's so much fun. Come out and do this. Thank you, man. By the way, Caden, you were awesome today, which is exactly what we were hoping to create today was an awesome memory Wait, between yeah, we Amy and her one. son and Jazz and, and her yeah. son and, and me for two, two of my daughters and two of the grandsons. Look at this one, you guys. <laughs> Spending it all together, making a memory. Got we it? had problems out there. Oh, right off it goes. We had exciting times. Yeah. We had kids jumping around. We had fish flopping. Yeah, you did that one all by yourself. One time a triple on big ones. How about that, a triple header, three at the same time. And all three really nice fish, huh? Everything that can happen in a day like that does. Don't ever make it too easy for the kids. Make them understand how that hunting happens. Make them understand that everybody missed casts. But at the same time, you want them to have fun. Chaos is the name of the game. Excitement's the name of the game. With five rods going off in the boat, tangles are gonna happen. And you know what? It's all good. Okay, up next. Plumber's Great Bear Lake Lodge in the Northwest Territories following a mid-August muskox hunt. Remote fly-in lake trout fishing on this, the fourth largest lake in North America, and the fine company of good friend, Dr. Jerry Faust. Holy moly. There you go. Oh yeah. 
Oh, that feels so much like fun, I can't tell you. Yeah. Well, that took okay. a long time oh, to be on. Oh, oh, yes. But to cut to the chase, it wasn't the trophy size or the numbers that made the trip so memorable. It was the notion of catching a particular variety of lake trout found only in Great Bear Lake one that at the time I thought had never been scientifically documented. Local guides call them butterfly lake trout. Ooh, they're here. They're in, here? In this area of the lake? Butterfly redfin. Yeah, with those big oh. purple, their colors of uh, uh, beets. They're, they're here. Then I hooked one. Fish. Maybe this is a little butterfly. There you go. What? <laughs> it's a butterfly? Is it really? Yep. It is. No. Oh. oh. It was. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. Babe's got one on. I think it's better. Maybe not. Yeah, there he is. Is that one of them? Yep. Oh, that's oh. 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 <laughs> Just out of reach. What a beauty. So we really want one of those fish. Yeah. We do, we do want one of those. Yeah, we sure and that's, do. And that's two now. Two, yeah, right at the boat. Oh, boy. Slam it. I mean, slam it. Love that in a fish. Yeah. Yeah. You yell for net, and I'll have it right there. There he is. Might be. Yep. That's what we've been looking for. That's the one we're looking for. There you go. Ah. <laughs> oh, man. You got yourself a butterfly. Way to go. Uh -uh. Right on. Wait. Oh! Yeah. Let's see this thing. Pretty fish. What you're going to see here is a species of lake trout. The only place I know of that they're found is here in Great Bear Lake. The locals up here, the guides and the fishermen, have named them butterfly trout because of the size of the fins on them and so forth. But this is a distinct, separate species. It's the third one we've had today, and the first one we've been able to land. Look at the size of the pectoral fin here on the fish. All their fins. All their that. fins are gray, big thing, very bright. I've seen them uh, already where the, the fins were the colors of beets. They got the big lips. And these great big lips like so on them. Yeah. The fish are very deep from here to here. Look at look at the fins. You can see the width on the fins. How much they're sticking out. How much all of the fins and size are exaggerated. Just completely different than any other lake trout anywhere. Now, I'm obviously a fisherman and anything but a fisheries biologist. So following our trip, my staff and I did some research on Great Bear Lake Trout. In layman's terms, I found out there are three different varieties there, which are considered lake trout morphs, not actually subspecies. The grays, also known as blues or white, are piscivorous feeders. They feed on primary fish in deeper open water areas. Consequently, they're built for speed exhibit very large mouths and grow to the largest size. Morph number two are the generalist feeders, often called redfin trout. These fish occupy more midwater areas, feeding on a combination of invertebrates, insect, and fish prey. Generally between five and seven pounds, they can be very old for their size and are the most common trout in the lake. Holy moly! Finally is the butterfly trout, or long-finned morph, which are benthic feeders. Occupying a shallower water niche, this means they feed on invertebrates on or around the bottom. Well, here we come. Now, now I'm feeling the weight. Yes, it's, a, it's yeah. another one, isn't it? Yeah. In Great Bear, this means a combination of snail species, scuds, and assorted aquatic insect hatches. That's four, mister. It's, that's four of these things, isn't it? They're so beautiful. Large fins, a deep body, a small rounded subterminal mouth, more thickly developed gill rakers make butterflies built for rooting, hovering, and inhaling their typical foods. So again, three unique lake trout morphs, not separate subspecies as I thought. 
and each one has highly evolved to survive in very different lake environments within massive Great Bear Lake. Fascinating, huh? Boy, now was this a wonderful morning. Morel mushrooms, beautiful Minnesota morning. And now I'm ready to go back to the kitchen and I want you guys to join me. The Great Taste from Chris's Kitchen, brought to you by the Great Taste of Johnsonville Sausage. Okay, I don't know about you, but I sure worked up an appetite after doing all that morel hunting. So I've got a few of them here and I'm gonna show you exactly how to make a wonderful steak sandwich with morels on the sides. I like to slice them in half and put them into an ice cold bath, that's a salt water bath. All right, now that I've got the morels all nice and clean, I'm gonna just take my pan and get it nice and hot. With a little bit of olive oil. Now I've got some venison steak that I thawed out and I sliced it very thin. And now I'm just gonna add some seasoning salt. You can add some garlic powder, some pepper, however you like to normally season your steak. And of course, I'm gonna add some fresh garlic as well. We're just gonna put that in. Now I'm gonna add my steak. And I'm gonna leave just a little space on the corner over here on the side. And that's where I'm gonna place my morels. And see with the morel, with a lot of the mushrooms, what it is, there's a lot of moisture in, inside the mushroom itself. And so you can see it inside your pan. I like to take my steak and just put it right in with all the juice because it's just like a wonderful, wonderful mushroom sauce and flavor that it gives the steak. Okay, that is done. Now I just like to layer a little bit of cheese so it gets nice and gooey all over the steak. Okay, I have to admit, it was a lot more fun hunting for the morels than actually cooking them, but let me tell you, it was a nice easy recipe. The venison steak and morel sandwiches, I hope you'll all enjoy. You know, I guess if there is a morel, <laughs> I mean moral, connecting today's three stories, it's that in the woods and waters there are always endless adventures going on for all of us to pursue. Now watch as I do this. For those of us who recognize this, the four seasons are a chance to look ahead from one activity to the next. As a family group with close friends or more for the sake of personal time alone, the outdoor lifestyle adds a special zest to life. And the more you fall in love with crappie fishing, big game hunting, remote fly and fishing trips for unique game fish, or mushroom picking, for example, the more you want to keep trying different things. That's how every new tradition begins. You know, it's passing them along to others that quadruples the meaning, and I guess that's what I love so much about presenting outdoor shows. Hopefully, they're a way to point out that life has a deeper reward when a big portion of it is spent chasing adventures in the great outdoors. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good fishing.